Come sit down with me as I walk you through one of the best racing rivalries in all of history. This is Rev Rewind. My name is Dylan. The story begins in 1983 in the cold, snowy mountains of Monte Carlo. No, no, no. It started a lot earlier than that. It started in 1977 when Audi developed a four-wheel drive system for the German military. Now, once Audi developed this platform, it made them ask a question. Would this work well in a family sedan? They always knew that a four-wheel drive system worked really well on loose surfaces, but then that made them question even more so, how well would that work on a car on a rally stage? Now, in the 1979 edition of the World Rally Championship rules, there was a bit of an issue. Four-wheel drive vehicles just weren't allowed. Audi had a clever solution to this. They sent a representative to the IPBAM, the governing body of the sport, to get this rule changed. This representative had a very special approach to this. He specifically waited for everyone else in the room to be ready to leave to bring up the proposition of removing the rule altogether. It's suspected that everyone in the room thought Audi just wanted to enter their little army car into the rally, but they were wrong. And what happened several years later was a massacre. Michelin's win is assured. Michel Mouton has scored at past Toivonen during the night. The superior traction of the Audi Quattro in the Yorkshire Forest has given her an 11 second advantage over Toivonen. 1981 arrived with Audi's first iteration of their Quattro, and they were met with nothing more than mere curiosity at the time, because the speculation was that a four wheel drive system would make a vehicle both heavier and more expensive, which it did. But this was immensely overshadowed by the amazing grip that it offered. And that led to victories in Sweden, San Remo, and RAC, proving that four-wheel drive in rallying was just the way to go. In 1982, Audi unveiled their new Audi Quattro. On top of this, they added Stig Blomqvist to their arsenal of already amazing drivers, one of them being Michelle Mouton, one of the greatest female drivers of all time. This allowed them to get the Manufacturer's Championship, winning seven event victories. It was clear by 1982 that you needed to have a four-wheel drive system to dominate the world of rallying. And most other teams accepted this reality, but not all. Lancia, being the stubborn Italians that they are, didn't hop on this four-wheel drive bandwagon, partly because they couldn't afford to. And their answer to Audi's success was this. <laughs> the Lancia 037 faster, lighter, and frankly, better looking than the Audi Quattro. The 037 was made with a few things in mind. Lightness, great maneuverability, a mid-engine, and most importantly, great visibility. However, while all of those are great things to have in a rally car, it was going to take a lot more than that to beat the Audi Quattro. So, let's talk teams. Audi had the budget and the might of Volkswagen, but they also had excellent drivers like Hanu Mikola, Stig Blomqvist, and Michelle Mouton, who is widely regarded as one of the best female drivers of all times. And in between the three, they had won 21 rallies altogether. Lancia, on the other hand, had Marco Allen and Walter Roll, who won the driver's title in 1980 and 1981. However, he did not want to win the world championship. He merely wanted to drive the most scenic races and win Monte Carlo. So that takes us to leadership. Well, Audi had a very hands-on and very German engineer at the helm, Roland Gumper. And Lancia, well, their leader was a little different. His name was Cesare Fiorio, and... He was a powerboat racer, and he was also leading a team of very disorganized Italians. But you see, Lancia wasn't new to the game. Cesare Fiorio being on the team himself for 10 years already, by 1983, they had already made waves in the world of rallying with the cars like the Stratus and the Fulvia. So any type of gray area they could operate in, you bet that's exactly where they were. Our first example is the rule of homologation. As stated in the rulebook, each car manufacturer must have 400 road legal versions of their car ready to go to paying customers. But Lancia had some other ideas. As stated from Jeremy Clarkson from the Grand Tour, they 
had 200 cars. They took the 200 cars, put them in one parking lot, invited the officials over, showed them all of the cars, and then took them out to lunch. While they were out to lunch, they made sure lunch went a little long, and they had their team move those 200 cars over to a new parking lot, and then took them to that parking lot. And that's how they got around the rule. Also, take a look at this. These are some pictures of the wrecked O37s, and if you inspect them closely, they don't look very strong, do they? Well, that's because it is suspected that Lancia cut corners anywhere they could, and some of those corners would have been what the car is made out of, or what they had in them, like roll cages. Look, Lancia was not expected to do well using two-wheel drive against four-wheel drive. It just didn't make sense. So it was gonna come down to the rallies themselves for them to beat the Audi Quattro. Huh, I'm wearing a different shirt now. Doesn't really matter. Here at Autolab Media, we don't really care about continuity. Do you notice the things on the shelf changing? Anyway, remember this? The story begins in 1983 in the cold, snowy mountains of Monte Carlo. Well, that's where we are now. Monte Carlo is known for having some really tight corners and really icy roads. And Lancia knew that their mid-engine rear-wheel drive car was not going to handle well on those roads. So how exactly did Lancia solve this problem? Well, they played into those gray areas again. Instead of getting the car ready for the road, they got the road ready for the car. Before the Monte Carlo race even began, they sent salt trucks down along the roads to throw down salt to melt all of the ice in the corners. But that's not all. Cesare Fiario made a call to the local police department pretending to be a member of the audience and complained that the road conditions were too dangerous for the spectators and drivers, and he demanded that the police came up and got rid of all of the ice that was too thick to be melted away. But even that wasn't enough. Some of the roads were just too snowy or too icy for the authorities to take care of. So the solution to this was to fit the 037 with studded tires. The problem was that before the snowy bits was tarmac roads, and tarmac would destroy the studded tires. The solution? Well, Lancia stopped the 037 in the middle of the rally stage for a pit stop to switch the tarmac tires for studded tires right before the icy parts. Now, there was nothing in the rules saying that they could do this, but more importantly, there was nothing saying they couldn't. Thanks to this, Lancia claimed a 1-2 victory in Monte Carlo. Sweden came next, which is a lot snowier than Monte Carlo. And Lancia's answer to that? Well, they just called in sick and didn't even show up, which led to Audi getting a 1-2-3-4 and four in a victory in Sweden. Which is a shame, because Lancia missed out on those Swedish meatballs. The next scheduled event was Portugal, which means that Lancia had a bit of an advantage for a couple of reasons. First was their driver Marcou, who had won this rally several times before. Next was the roads themselves. 1983 introduced a new tarmac leg of the Portugal rally, which was in contrast to the mostly dirt roads used in the rally before. This kind of brought a balance to the competition, as the 037 was an absolute beast on tarmac roads. However, unfortunately due to a protest happening at the same time, the tarmac leg was shortened, which took away most of Lancia's advantage and gave Audi a 1-2 victory. This theme continued into the Africa Safari Rally, where things were starting to look bleak for Lancia. Now, Africa roads are a little bit different, and they were worried that their car wouldn't really last on those roads. So, they didn't show up either, which is a shame, because they missed out on all of the safari animals. Now, the safari rally is a little bit different. Now, there are portions of this rally that are in deep mud, on very, very loose gravel and sand, and even on public roads. So rather than trying to go for a fast time, you really just wanted reliability. And that's something that Audi really did not master yet on their Audi Quattro. And they lost this race as well. In order to win now, Lancia needed a slingshot back into the running. A race primarily based on tarmac in which they could demolish the Quattro and make up all the points that they had missed out on. And this race was Corsica. Cesare did not only want to win this race, but to also take points away from Audi. 
Lancia had shown up with four 037s, and while Audi had used this race to present three of their new Quattro A2 variants, all boasting 400 horsepower and a weight loss of 100 kilograms, it just wasn't enough. You see, the Quattro had a ridiculous amount of understeer, while the Lancia was amazing through the corners. In fourth place, on the limit with the turbo boost turn right up, Mikola is the only one who's managed to ruffle Lancia. As a result of her accident, Michel Mouton is struggling with poor handling. At this point, the best Audi could have hoped for was fifth place, and things were looking up for them. Thanks to the driving of Mikola, who was pushing the car to the limits, it looked like they would get that. However, he got a little too close to the limits of the Audi Quattro, and due to mechanical failures, they had to retire two of their cars, causing them not to get fifth place. And that left Lancia to get the one, two, three, and four, putting them right back on track. A similar thing happened in Acropolis, where the road conditions were so bad that breakdowns were regularly expected. However, just like the one outside my house, the only one breaking down were the Audis. They did the same thing in New Zealand, where Mikola was experiencing engine problems, Sig Blongfist was excluded from the race, and Michelle Mouton just had engine failures. It was looking pretty up for Lancey right now, because they had two crushing victories in a row. At this point, everyone was astonished by the two-wheel drive Lancia 037. Audi was going to need a Hail Mary to get ahead of Lancia now, especially if they wanted to scrape the championship right out from underneath them. And that's where the Rally of Finland came into play. Lancia driver Rural didn't want to race in Finland due to all the bumpy surfaces that led to a lot of airtime in the cars. Due to this, Lancia didn't have one of their best drivers, allowing Audi to take a 1-2 victory in Finland. Next was Argentina, where Audi got a 1-2-3-4 victory, ensuring that the championship was still anyone's game. It all came down to San Remo, Italy, and Lancia had enough points to win the manufacturer's championship as long as they won San Remo properly. And this is something they wanted to do because it meant winning on their own home turf. However, there was one small problem. San Remo was very dusty. And even after sending vans down to kind of filter out and clean the roads and settle down the dust, there was still too much. And the main problem is that while you were sitting at the starting line, after the car in front of you had gone down the track, there would be too much dust in the air from all of them kicking it up. The Lancia drivers had a very good solution to this. To stall as much as they could at the starting line pretending to have mechanical issues. Once the dust settles, they would start. But... The race officials quickly caught on to this and soon shut it down, which brought back the issue of dust. Without good visibility, everything came down to the skill of the driver, and to quote Walter Worrell himself, he became one with his 037. This allowed Lancia to take a 1-2-3 victory in San Remo, absolutely demolishing Audi. After this, Lancia had mathematically won the world championship. Whirl himself had won 33 of the 58 stages in San Remo. Audi's Hanu Mikola did win the Drivers' Championship for the season, but it is worth mentioning that Whirl, having raced only half of the races, had come in second place. In the end, it's a Lancia 1-2-3, and that secures the 1983 World Manufacturer's title. It's the second San Remo win for Alain, and he could yet still go on to win the World Drivers' Championship. Yes, Lancia had won. Two-wheel drive beat four-wheel drive, and... Lancia proved that it took a lot more than just amazing grip to win these rallies. Lancia proved that they were one of the best manufacturers of all time, despite being owned by FCA and now being rebranded as Electric Cars, whatever that is. Thank you for watching. We plan on doing more of these kinds of videos, and if you liked them, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment what you think of the video.